Hello, first of all, I am Mr. Christian Gamow, and I am so happy to have you to learn a fish and a fish. Hello, my name is Christian Gamow, and I am so excited to be here with you this weekend to work on some photography skills with you all. In today's video, I am just going to introduce the themes we are going to cover and give you a bit of an overview before going into some of the well, the first lesson, really, and I'll also give you some assignments for the weekend. So as you know, on Sunday we're going to have the chance to talk a little bit about the photos you've created and I'll be giving you some feedback as well. One of the things I really want to stress in this tutorial is that the equipment that you're using isn't all that important to make a really impactful image. So personally, I love shooting with a DSLR, so like a kind of bit of a heavier camera, um, but to be quite honest, there really isn't that much that you can do with a DSLR that you can't do with a smartphone. So the good thing for me in this series is a, that I don't have to explain many of the technical terms of photography, like exposure or all the kind of different focus settings or um, different aperture settings. Um, instead, we can focus on creating cool, fun and meaningful photos this weekend. I will say though that you can use everything that I'm going to teach you on any camera. Um, it's really important to get all of these basics right. That being said, all you need for this course is a smartphone with a camera and we're also going to use some free editing software. In one of the lessons tomorrow, we're going to chat a little bit about editing your photos um, after you've taken them. But I thought I'd give you a heads up today so you can download um, the apps in advance if you need to. My favorite app to use is called Snapseed, which is available for both iOS and Android. And this is also the app which I'm going to use tomorrow to demonstrate a couple of key points. Another option would be Afterlight. That's another really good one and easy to use. Um, however, even most apps that you probably use already, like Instagram especially, or some of your um, apps that you already have on your phone, like kind of the camera app itself or the photo app itself, um, they already have some basic editing features. And as long as you understand the basics that we're going to cover, you can really use um, any app. So today's video will start with the first lesson, which is going to be all about composition. And we'll then have a chance to try out everything we've learned with a couple of different assignments which I'll give you at the end. Tomorrow you will be able to watch two more videos. Um, so there's one that's also going to talk about a couple of uh, compositional elements, which I think are really important for your photos. And then one about editing. Alright Maha, let's get started. Okay, the rule of thirds is the first compositional rule that any photographer encounters. And it's a really simple tool for elevating your photography. And there's a good reason it gets mentioned in just about every photography tutorial. It's important to stress that not every single photo has to follow this rule. And of course, some of the best photographs ever created don't follow it. But as a starting point, it's so helpful and it's an incredibly useful tool. And we'll see why in a second. The basic idea is that you divide your camera's frame into horizontal or vertical thirds. So you can then place the key objects or fields along one of these lines to make your photo photograph more visually pleasing. To take it a step further, you can divide the frame both horizontally and vertically, and then this leaves you with nine equal rectangles and four points of intersection. So these four points are where you should place the main subject or any points of interest. So for example, in a landscape, it's a good idea to place the horizon on one of these horizontal lines. We'll talk a little bit later, or actually tomorrow, about the horizon and how to place it. Um, but this is a really good starting point if we use the rule of thirds. And then for a portrait, you might want to place some of the key elements um, on the places of intersection as well. So one really good one would be the eyes. The great thing 
about many cameras, including smartphones, is that it let, lets you add this division when you take the photo. So depending on your phone, it's probably a little bit different on each of them, but usually you find it in the main settings of your phone when you go to camera and then you want to switch on grid lines. I should also say they don't appear in the final image. So even if you see them on your screen, they won't appear then. It's always a good idea to try and frame your photo in the moment that you take it, especially with landscape photography. You can really take your time when you take the image and really try and place all the elements where you want them, especially using the rule of thirds on the intersections, all of that. Um, you can also edit it later after you've taken the photo and there's a bit of leeway where you can crop it to make sure it's, it's, it's balanced. Um, but the easiest way really is to look at it while you're taking the photo. Okay, so having spoken about the rule of third, it's time to give you a couple of assignments to practice these. I am giving you two options here and you can really pick your own adventure. And I think both really lend themselves to a lot of different photography experiments. They're both really open to interpretation. So feel free to take, for example, landscape photos, whether that's in the countryside or in a more urban setting or any smaller scenes, for example, using objects in your own home or using people and asking them to pose for portraits for you. I think both of the themes would work really well as an excuse to go out and explore your local area and your surroundings if you can. However, I'm aware that not everyone may be able to do this at the moment. So I think there's lots of ways you can use your own home and your own surroundings in lots of creative ways and to really see everything in a new light and a new perspective. The first theme which I'm personally really excited about is the poetry of George Campbell Hay, Talbot's local Gaelic poet. I have added a couple of poems below, which are really striking for the way they talk about the natural environment and the way it affects people. But feel free to use any of his poems. So use some of them once that we're providing, or if you already know one, use that. Or if you want to look online or in a book and find some new ones, that'd be really cool as well. What I'd like you to do, however, is to pick one of his poems and um, try to capture some quality of it in your photography. So it's a really open-ended task. So what you could do is just use one of his poems and try to create a photo that you could use as a background. For example, if you were at a reading, one photo that really captures the essence of the entire poem. Or you could try to create an album. So for example, thinking about each verse of a poem as an opportunity to have one photo so that you end up with an album that um, goes through all of the verses and really captures um, some quality of it all. If you're unsure about this task, I have one alternative assignment for you and that's colors or nadahen. So first and foremost, I think this is a really good opportunity for you to practice your color names in Gaelic and learn them if you don't know them yet. I think that's really useful to know. And then I'd like you to pick one color and really try to plan an image around that. So for example, sometimes the most effective way to use a color is to have one really colorful part of your photo that really makes everything else pop, even if the rest is more monochrome. Another way would be to really go all in on one color and sort of try to think about what a color can represent and what emotion it can bring to an image. So for example, what would a blue or gorum image look like? Or if it's more uh, buye or lia or any of these uh, colors. So you, it's really up to you again how you want to do it. You can choose, for example, one color and make a sort of album around it with lots of different kind of scenes. Or you can, for example, choose lots of different colors and have one image per color. Anyway, I'm really excited to see what you come up with and if you manage to use the rule of thirds for these images and if you find it a useful tool 
and I'm really excited to see you again for the next video tomorrow. Oh,